Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado. And today I'm going to be addressing a common medication that many of my clients have at one point used or are still using when they come to see me that has been shown in research to be connected to either the onset of Hashimoto's symptoms or the worsening of hypothyroidism. So welcome and buckle up. We're going to be talking today about one of the most prescribed medications anywhere in the world, and that is proton pump inhibitors. What? PPIs, pro proton pump inhibitors, are also known as acid reflux medications, and they go by a lot of common names that you're probably familiar with. Prevacid, as well as a bunch of other um, over-the-counter names as well as um, many of the prescription names. Maybe if you look in your medicine cabinet, you actually have something called omeprazole. That's the generic and most commonly prescribed um, version of like Prilosec, okay? So this is a medication that is basically used to help manage GERD. I have other videos on my website about some digestive issues, including heartburn and reflux. So be sure to check that one out. But PPIs, we'll just call them that, okay, which are medications used to address acid reflux, GERD, ulcers, and indigestion are the most common uh, medication in the United States. In fact, Americans have spent more than $14 billion on these types of drugs. And more, on average, each year, more than 190 million prescriptions for acid blockers are filled at pharmacies each year. This is really mind-blowing information. I've been reading some research lately because I've found just a, a commonality among so many of my clients, as I said, who have been taking this type of medication to manage symptoms, but also have found that shortly... Um, thereafter, they noticed that they had some changes in either the way that their levothyroxine or other thyroid hormones were working or not working so well for them, or they didn't previously have a thyroid problem, maybe a couple decades later after taking a PPI, they actually discovered that they had begun the process of developing autoimmune thyroiditis. These two things are connected. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit with you today about what we know about PPIs, how they work, and how they interfere with your ultimate thyroid health. So as I mentioned, the most commonly prescribed one is omeprazole, and that is spelled O-M-E-P-R-A-Z-O-L-E. -E. Look inside your medicine cabinet. It goes by Prilosec, but also there's Prevacid, Nexium, uh, Protonics, and some other uh, medications uh, that have a lot of these similar types of ingredients. So do you have acid reflux or GERD or heartburn or have you ever had them, uh, these symptoms at all in your life? Because if you have, then more than likely if you went to visit your doctor or spoke to your pharmacist at your local drugstore, they recommended one of these medications as the best way to sort of support your body and to start feeling better so you didn't always have this discomfort, pain and constriction and uh, indigestion and burping and, you know, keeping you up at night. That's pretty miserable. Um, in fact, I myself have had acid indigestion or silent reflux GERD um, at various points throughout my own health journey. In fact, you may uh, be aware that one of my earliest set of symptoms that was misdiagnosed, um, I was told that I had IBS and that part of my IBS uh, set of symptoms was the silent reflux or GERD. Well, in fact, it was actually celiac disease and food intolerances and leaky gut and uh, also ultimately Hashimoto's. But my story aside, it is not uncommon. Um, a lot of people uh, like myself included in my 20s, we do pretty much anything over the counter to just solve these problems because it feels awful. I know that when I was in college, I could chew those little Pepto-Bismol tablets like they were going out of style. 
I didn't know if certain foods were aggravating my condition, but I knew that I felt pretty badly with just about everything that I ate or drank. And I took a lot of, you know, things like Pepto-Bismol and Prilosec over the counter. And I basically was suppressing my body's ability to produce hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is really important and a major, major component of healthy digestion. We need to have the correct and necessary amounts of these biochemical uh, components that help us to be strong uh, digesters of our food and also so that we can absorb and assimilate the nutrients into our bloodstream our tissues, our cells, and our organs. And so if we're not getting nutrition because we've suppressed our hydrochloric acid, well, there's a good chance that you may have some malabsorption to begin with. That was certainly the case for me because on top of it being celiac disease, which causes malabsorption, I was also taking medications that were suppressing stomach acid and enzymes and some other factors that was reducing my body's ability to bring nutrition into my body. So I have learned in working with my clients over many years that GERD or acid reflux symptoms are pretty common in people who have Hashimoto's. And my research that I've been doing over these past many months um, is that the, the number one thing for people who have Hashimoto's isn't really that they have too much stomach acid. It's actually that they have too little. So go ahead and watch my other video. This will kind of take you down another rabbit hole all about H. pylori. Okay, so go ahead and learn about that. And then also, you probably want to check out my video about secretory IgA. These are all connected. So if you actually have too little or even no stomach acid, you can actually have the same kind of symptoms as having too much. So this is one of the problems with being, um, you know, these types of medications being widely used and prescribed is that a lot of times they're given because it is perceived that a person has too much stomach acid when in fact they actually have too low of stomach acid and they may have some other functional issues like issues with slow peristalsis or maybe some um, esophageal sphincter issues where maybe that lower sphincter is not closing and whatever stomach acid they do have is coming up. Many folks may have a hiatal hernia or some other issues with their digestive system that's mimicking an increase in stomach acid and not the other way around. So if your doctor has prescribed or your pharmacy has recommended or you just picked it up over the counter an acid suppressing medication, this is actually doing nothing to fix underlying causes of your discomfort, which may be a variety of things. Remember, there are a number of triggers for these types of dig digestive issues. It may be that there is an imbalance of bacteria in your body. There may be food intolerances triggers things like gluten or dairy, soy or corn or other protein antigens that are causing this inflammation. There may be low secretory IgA, leaky gut, things like you know eating gluten and the elevation of zonulin, which is causing that rapid degradation and the intestinal permeability of the epithelial lining within your digestive system. So once we start talking about digestive dysfunction, we are talking about a whole can of worms. And so unfortunately, rather than getting into some of the deeper, more root cause reasons why these are taking place, we just, you know, take a medication to try to fix it. And no wonder because people are suffering and it's such an awful feeling. Um, I, I know again from my own experience that you pretty much would do just about anything to take that discomfort away. And even though I've also had some heart issues, I remember that heartburn actually was more uncomfortable than having some pretty major heart issues later in life. So here's one of the biggest things. Research shows us that individuals who have low hydrochloric acid, okay, stomach acid, gastric secretions, gastric stomach juices, whatever you want to call it, these individuals require a higher dosage of their levothyroxine. They need more of their medication because it's not getting absorbed properly due to low HCL. 
And there's other research that shows that people with hypothyroidism and normal thyroid values like TSH, they may need additional thyroid function testing um, after they've been treated with a PPI for a long term because what happens is, is that they actually may need an adjusted dose of their uh, thyroid medication, especially as they're going off of PPIs. So I know this is very complicated, but basically the um, acid-lowering medications can make a false diagnosis and basically treatment recommendation from your prescribing physician for your thyroid medication because of the absence of low hydrochloric acid. Please keep this in mind. So medications and supplements can suppress stomach acid and it can impair the absorption of synthetic thyroid hormones uh, that we take to help support our bodies. Um, but also, did you know that too much calcium and magnesium and iron can have the same effect as well? So you have to take a look at the whole situation going on in your medicine cabinet. If you have maybe a peptic ulcer, you have hypothyroidism, you have a medicine cabinet full of things like Tums and um, Pepsi chewables, and you're also taking calcium because you've been told maybe that you have low bone density and you're taking iron for maybe anemia and magnesium because that's supposed to support your thyroid. In essence, all of these things make a perfect storm for you not to be able to produce adequate hydrochloric acid and absorb not just the nutrition that you need from your food, but also to be able to absorb your levothyroxin or other thyroid medication. So it's very important to do an evaluation of what you have in your home and to sit down with your doctor or to sit with someone who is board certified in holistic nutrition and can help you understand drug-drug interactions, drug-nutrient interactions, drug-food interactions, and also drug and lab test interactions. All of these things are within our wheelhouse and we can help you kind of pinpoint and be, you know, like little private investigators for you to figure out, have you been taking certain types of over-the-counter medications that have been interfering with your hypothyroidism or your Hashimoto's? Now, last but not least, I just want to really kind of bring this back full circle, which is that a history of low hydrochloric acid, so forget the symptoms, forget the discomfort, forget the remedies over the counter, but that people who have a long-standing history of low stomach acid are more likely to have infections like H. pylori and are more likely to have low secretory IgA are more likely to have leaky gut and are more likely to have reactions to certain foods being triggers for their immune system so that after many years or even decades in the works, this is what has caused or led to the development of their autoimmunity against the thyroid. We know for sure, right, that leaky gut is, you know, behind a lot of things. When in doubt, check the gut, right? So we look to see like what type of history does the individual have? What's been their relationship with foods? Do they always have issues with tomatoes and citrus and wine, chocolate? What's kind of going on there? And then we also look to see what is their medication usage pattern been like? Were they someone like me in college chewing away on Pepto-Bismol every time, you know, there was a big test or a night after a fraternity party just, you know, trying to make the discomfort go away? It's important to think about these things and the ways in which our bodies over time began the process of the leaky gut and the resultant autoimmunity. So having low or no stomach acid really puts us at risk for a great number of health issues. It really can contribute to that unbalanced microbiome. It can help us to develop food sensitivities. It can help us to develop things like H. pylori and SIBO. It can help us to develop loads of micronutrient deficiencies. And so there are definitely ways that we can repair, restore the gut, help to heal from things like low hydrochloric acid and all of the resultant symptoms. I have lots of other videos here on my channel. Thank you for watching this one today and learning about the very strong connection 
between PPIs and your thyroid health. Stay tuned for more videos. I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.